The Anzac Puppy by Peter Millett In the middle of the night, in the middle of winter, in the middle of a war, a puppy was born. A softly spoken girl called Lucy gently stroked the newborn puppy's shimmering coat. I think I'll call you Frida, she whispered. Lucy's family loved Frida very much, but they couldn't afford to keep her. They already had one too many hungry mouths in the house to feed. So one day, Frida was placed in a box and left by the side of the road. Lucy sat watching over her, hoping and praying that no one would notice her. But a young soldier on his way to war noticed the beautiful little puppy. He scooped her up in his arms. What's your puppy's name? he asked. Frida, Lucy whispered. What's yours? Sam. The soldier smiled and hugged Frida. Don't worry, I'll take good care of her. When the war's over, I promise I'll bring her back to you, safe and sound. Sam's commanding officer couldn't believe that Sam wanted to take a puppy along with him on his way to the battlefront. Are you mad? he boomed. A war zone's no place to raise a young dog. No worries, said Sam, grinning. She's going to be my good luck mascot. Sam's first week at the front wasn't as bad as he thought it would be, but during his second week, when the attacks began, it was worse than he could have ever imagined. With the earth shaking and rocking all around him, he felt like crying, but he didn't. He knew that he had to be brave for Frida. In the middle of Sam's little cubby hole in the dirt, Frida grew bigger each day. Soon she was big enough to scare off the rats that scuttled about through the trenches. Trapped in their grimy prison, Sam and Frida shared everything they had. Their blankets, their bully beef, biscuits and water, even their fleas. Sam spent many hours writing letters to his mother back home. He never mentioned the horrible sights or the sounds that surrounded him. He only wrote stories about his beautiful little friend who was the bravest puppy he had ever seen in his life. At Christmas time, he sent his mother a picture of Frida. Day after day, the explosions became louder and louder. The long, cold nights at the front soon turned into long, terrifying months. Sam never knew if he would live to see the next day, but he knew that he had to. He had promised Lucy that he would bring Frida home safe and sound. Soon, Sam began to wonder if it was only Frida's luck that was keeping him alive. His friends prayed her luck would somehow protect them too. Every day, Sam lost more and more of his friends at the Western Front. Friends he had grown up with, and friends he had played sports with at school. These were friends he would never see again. Soon, Frida was the only friend Sam had left in the world. As the months slowly turned into years, Sam became more and more upset by the fighting. He was sick of the endless explosions. He was sick of the crying. He just wanted to go home. Then, one day, the roaring guns fell silent. The generals decided it was time for the fighting to end. There were no more bullets to fire and no more tears to cry. Sam and Frida slowly emerged from their muddy trench. Sam was no longer a boy and Frida was no longer a puppy. After a long journey home, Sam took Frida back to the house where he had found her. Sam was surprised to see a young woman greet him, not a girl. Frida! Lucy cried as she ran down the path to greet them. Sam smiled at her. I told you I'd bring her back safe and sound. He hugged the dog and placed his medal around her neck. 
Thank you, girl, he whispered. I couldn't have survived the war without you. During the months that followed, Sam came back to visit Frida and Lucy. Then, during one of his visits, something very special happened. Sam and Lucy got married. One year later, in the middle of the night, in the middle of the winter, in the middle of Sam's farm, a beautiful little baby was born. Her name was Frida.